In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We say together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We pause for a moment as we look back on our lives and prepare to make our confession. We say together, Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Go in peace. Come and follow me. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us, in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. Psalm 100 The Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting. O be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. The Lord, the Lord is gracious. His, his steadfast love is everlasting. Hello, my name is Sue Usman, and I'm taking the reading today from St. Matthew's Gospel. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. Then he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. 
This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel Canticle Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's rather my normal habit to be writing my sermon still on Saturday evening, but this week I'm recording before taking a week's holiday, so I spent much of this week reflecting on the horrific murder of George Floyd by police officers in broad daylight, the latest, or possibly but not by the time this is broadcast, in a long line of black victims of police brutality and the ensuing protests spreading across the United States. And just at the moment as I am writing, protests are starting to spread across the UK, where we want to say that things are different. But Windrush, Grenfell, Stephen Lawrence, the disproportionate Covid fatalities among the black, Asian and minority ethnic communities belie that claim. And people want to be heard protesting against the systemic racism of our societies and demanding change. If you wanted to start a new organisation to transform society, I wonder who you might choose. People with a proven record of leadership. Someone whose skill at keeping an eye on the finances. Politicians with useful connections to those in power and authority. Entrepreneurs and bankers to keep the funds rolling in. Jesus, it seems, has other ideas, and he chooses a bunch of fishermen, a dodgy tax collector, and one or two people that might have links, not to power and authority, but rather to revolutionary groups. We're told their names in our Gospel reading today, which starts our journey through Matthew's account of Jesus' ministry, which we will follow throughout ordinary time this year. Jesus has been spending his time teaching in synagogues, proclaiming the kingdom and healing in an unfashionable part of the country. The crowds here are the peasants, the forgotten people whose concerns are of no interest or consequence to the ruling elite. Unlike the ruling elite, Jesus has compassion on them as they are without leadership. They have no one who cares about them. To Jesus, these are not the little people of no consequence. These people belong to the Lord of the harvest. His concern for them and the depth of their need is such that he summons his twelve disciples and sends them out as apostles to work among the crowds, giving the disciples authority over evil spirits that are the source of disease and to proclaim the kingdom of God. Proclamation here isn't just announcing something, it has the effect of actually creating that new social order, much like a king proclaiming a new law. It's interesting to note that Jesus has been spending his time teaching, healing and proclaiming the kingdom, but he doesn't send the twelve out to teach, to correct wrong thinking. He sends them out to heal, to hear the pain. When your child comes running to you with a grazed knee, you don't say all knees matter. You tend to the one that is injured. You listen to the story of how it happened. You bathe the wound and apply soothing ointments and sticky plasters. And if you hear that the injury is due to a bully in the playground, then a wise parent takes action against that bully 
to protect their child in future. As the 21st century's disciples of Jesus Christ, we too are sent out by Jesus to proclaim the good news of a kingdom of God, a kingdom of justice and peace, where all are valued equally, created in the image of God, to bring healing by casting out the evil spirits of systemic racism. Just as they were in Jesus' time, the fields are ripe now for harvest. During this current lockdown, people have been turning to the church. A recent Observer headline stated that the British public have been turning to prayer and one in four have been tuning in to religious services and one in 20 have started praying during the crisis, according to a new survey. Particularly younger people than are commonly attending our churches a third of adults between 18 and 34 have watched or listened to an online broadcast religious service compared with just one in five adults over the age of 55. Issues surrounding racial and sexual inclusivity provide a major stumbling block for young people relating to the institutional church. And one in five of those who have turned to ch tuned in to church services in the past few weeks say they have never gone to a church service before in their lives. So it's not enough for us simply to not be racist ourselves. We need to be actively anti-racist to encourage these people to come and spend time, to take seriously our message that Jesus is the Lord of all. How do we do that? We need to take time to listen to the experiences of people of colour. And there's plenty of material available, books and videos, speaking to those we know ourselves. We need to speak up when we overhear racist jokes and comments, it's not enough just to not join in, to pretend we haven't heard it. We need to actively speak up. And we need to pray. To pray for those with power to lead the necessary change. For an increase in awareness of how we individually and corporately contribute to the problem of racism and how we can resolve it. And so we begin and end in prayer. God of truth, help us to keep your law of love and to walk in the ways of wisdom, that all peoples, races and nations may find true life in your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made known. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God our Father, we bring to you in prayer today our world in the present corona crisis. We pray that the Holy Spirit may so direct those who bear the responsibility and exercise the authority of the leadership of this country. We pray also for the leaders of our church in this diocese, praying for Bishop Gregory, Archdeacon Barry, and our Vicar Caroline, and all clergy who have the responsibility of leading our churches to a new way of worship. And help us all to adapt ourselves to the possible changing of pat pattern of life. So may your name be glorified in all things, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We pray for peace in our world. Pray for those caught up in the violence and demonstrations in the USA, in this country and throughout the world at this present time. We ask that you take away all bitterness and hatred, granting that all peoples of all colours and races may learn to live together in fellowship, acknowledging that all life is precious through the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue to hold in our prayers all who are suffering in mind, body or spirit, all who are anxious, lonely or housebound, and those grieving the loss of loved ones. We ask that the presence of the risen Lord may be near us all and give us assurance, peace and strength at this painful and anxious time. Amen. Loving Father, we ask you to grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, courage to change the things we can and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.